All right, this is about our first trip, our not our first trip, but we went to southwest of England with Friendship Force. And this is what the southwest England counties look like. Um, we were supposed to go to Bristol to meet up, and then we toured Somerset, and after that, we went to Cornwall. It was, we had to figure out how to get to Bristol and we bypassed London by flying to Amsterdam and then taking a hopper flight over to Bristol. So this is what the countryside looked like when we were flying over. Lots of farm. Lots of farmland and small villages. So from my youth, I remembered Bristol was where uh, Treasure Island started. But what I didn't know was that Bristol is a thriving center for producing TV series, including Poldark and Sherlock Holmes, the version with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, Masterpiece does some filming here and ITV has studios here. So we went first to our welcome party and they welcomed with the joint American and British flags. So we were somewhere out in the Somerset countryside. The welcome party was lunch and then this beautifully manicured garden. And then I took a look over the back fence and this is what I saw. You can see we really are out in the country. The stones you see in the pasture are considered to be quite old, prehistoric. The cows don't seem to be concerned. So we will leave here and go to our host's house. Wow, we were quite surprised when we got to our host's home to see a mansion. We had Googled it from Dallas and all we could see was a brick wall. So it was quite a surprise to see Stratton Court. Sometimes you luck out. This is Mar Malcolm and Sharon Blake, our hosts. He was a retired Naval officer and their hobby business was beekeeping. They did sell their honey into the market. In their backyard was a pasture where they kept the neighbor's horse. Now I didn't get any pictures inside of their home, but this stove they had was kind of curious. Uh, it's a British curiosity, I think. It's an aga. And both houses we stayed in had this aga. It's cast iron, very expensive, and it runs all the time. The, the top burner is one's for boiling and one's for simmering, and it has multiple ovens. They, it costs uh, well over $10,000. So we went for a walk out to see the town. We were in the village of Overstratton, population 317. There was only one street, which really didn't seem to have a name. And there was one pub. This was the pub, but no shops. One Methodist church that seemed to have a service once a month. Walking on down the road, we saw this public footpath. The sign reads, can you help? Enforcement officers are looking for information 
leading to the identity or person who is not cleaning up after their dog in this area. Please call the enforcement officers in confidence with any information. Very British, don't you think? I love it, in confidence. All right, so this is a map of Bath. Can you see the pointer? I'm sorry, a map, map of Somerset. Can you see the pointer, no? Yes, we can see the pointer. Okay, so this is Bath, a World Heritage Site. And then we'll go down to Wells and then Glastonbury. Um, we may get to Stonehenge. I'm gonna skip over Exmoor, but the moors are quite important in Britain. Uh, they, they sometimes have literary backgrounds. These boor, moors have been turned into national parks. So here we are in, hard for me to say, Bath. Are, do you have this? Yeah, we can see the text over on the left. You can. Do you see the people there? No. Okay. It's, a it's a little difficult to see them. Are they in the water? I'm trying to get it off my screen. Yeah, okay. You mean up on the bridge? No, no. Oh. Oh. I'm told All right. has many All right. Right, so nobody uses the bath because because it has meningitis. You see that? Yeah. That's not the right screen. Oh. How did I get to that screen? Still a great picture. <laughs> you don't see the Roman bath. Yeah. Okay. The and Roman it, bath, yes. It, it reads, reads, bath is an historic Roman and Georgian spa city. Yes. You see it. Okay. So, Bath is famous for its hot springs, Roman baths, medieval heritage, and stately Georgian architecture. It's not a, not a big town, it's 99,000 population. So, the baths were used well into the 20th century People could bathe here, but now the baths are closed off to the public since 1978 after a girl who swam in the water died of a meningitis related illness. So not to worry, there are other places you can go into the thermal baths. Yes, it's been cleaned up a bit. I'm not sure it has the same curative properties. So what's Georgian architecture? Well, it's symmetrical design, classic proportions, decorative elements from Greek and Roman architecture. Why is it Georgian? Well, it was built in the time of the reigns of England's King George's. England had four King George's in the 1700s and 1800s. And this is where the name Georgian comes from. Could be simple, but very symmetrical. 
The Royal Crescent is the most famous structure in Bath, or hmm, it was designed by John Wood the Younger. It is a series of townhouses. The city reflects the ambitions of his father, John Wood, and, and the son, and they set out to make Bath into one of the most beautiful cities in Europe with architecture and landscape combined in harmony. This is the same building from a bird's eye view and you can easily see the townhouses here how they're combined in front and you can see them in the back. If you look in the top of the screen, you see down the road that, that this similar architecture goes down and, and the, then there's a circle with a park in the middle. So they, John Wood and his son set out to lay the city out in quarters and streets and squares with identical facades, which gave the impression of scale and, and classical design. This is Pulteney Bridge over the Avon River, built in 1774. You can find shops and cafes and restaurants inside. Um, if you're confused, there are several Avon rivers in England, four or five to be exact. Actually, Avon comes from the Welsh word for river. So it's river, river. Near the center of Bath is the Jane Austen Center where you can have tea and look at books. And they have parks. This is Palladium architecture. Julia noticed this pillar box and uh, was asking her hosts if that was pretty old. And yes, it's, it's hexagonal. And I looked it up and it comes from the Elizabethan times. Our host had never noticed it before. Okay, so Bath has an abbey and it's not a cathedral. Why is it not a cathedral? Because a cathedral must have a bishop. So what happened to the bishop? Well, he went 17 miles away to this little town. Wells. Uh, also, if you're a, a town, you can call yourself a city if you have a cathedral. So uh, Rick Steves does such a nice description. I'll, I'm going to turn it over to him for a minute or two. So that was the Wells Cathedral. And did I mention the bishop has a palace there? That might be uh, him out there playing croquet, not sure. So now you know why the bishop went to Wells. It's a small town, so the town crier announces us, hear ye, hear ye, the friendship force from Oklahoma is here. This is downtown with shops. It was drizzling a little that day, but it was also market day. 
And here our host is bargaining for our supper. Now, here's something unusual. It was the town's hall, the town hall, but it's been converted to the Warlegan Bank for a film, a Poldark session temporarily. And that's the first we'll see of Poldark. Not far away is Glastonbury Abbey, the ruins of Glastonbury Abbey. It's been in this ruined stage for a long time. So the Abbey was the second wealthiest Abbey in Britain behind Westminster Abbey in 1536 during the 27th year of Henry VIII, there were over 800 monasteries. By 1541, there were none. He wanted the wealth they, they had accumulated. So Glastonbury Abbey was one of the principal victims of this action by the king during the social and religious upheaval known as the dissolution of the monasteries. Yes, here this wench is telling us the story of the Abbey. And the friar on the left is one of our hosts. It says the bodies of King Arthur and Guinevere were found on the grounds and reburied under a black marble tomb. Hmm. But is Arthur real or a legend? Well, it does make an attraction for wandering pilgrims, and maybe we can collect a farthing or two. Nearby is Glastonbury Tor, a pastoral view. Glastonbury Tor has a long history extending into Arthurian legends, but it was here that the abbot of Glastonbury and his compatriots were hanged. We climbed the hill. And from the top of the tour, which means hill, we could see the beautiful countryside and a, and a young lady too. So that was the important part of our Somerset tour. I've had to cut out some to make it fit into 35, 40 minutes. Now we will visit Stonehenge for our farewell party. Hmm. A few Wiccans or Druids, perhaps, or maybe they're just celebrating the solstice. Well, actually, you can't get that close. This is the limit, unless you buy a very expensive ticket to go in among the stones. So next we set off to Cornwall. But we didn't go by horse. We rented a car, five speed, left-handed stick shift. Can you imagine going around that curve on the left-hand side of the road? Okay, here is a map of Cornwall, and it's actually the walking trails. Uh, Truro is down in the center here, and that's where we're headed. But this tells you where all the walking trails are. This one goes to St. Ives. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Every wife had seven 
sacks. Every sack had seven cats. Every cat had seven kits. Kits, cats, sacks, wives, how many were going to St. Ives? Well, just me. <laughs> going in the other direction is a, is a good puzzle to, to calculate how many. Okay, we get to Truro, and we stayed with these two people, Derek and Mary Painter. They, we had previously known them from Richardson, and uh, he was in the oil business and, and went off to the Mideast to make his fortune. So this is their home. The very next day, Julia and her friend headed off to tea. Now, they have rules in the tea house. Turn off your mobile phone. And if you can't get in the tea house, you can't afford to get in the tea house. Well, just find a bench somewhere. So meanwhile, I went in the other direction. I went off to explore the Cornwall mining. So the mines produced tin, copper, and arsenic. Arsenic they also sold. It was a little bit of a problem for the miners. It's dangerous work. Here's a couple of uh, accidents. 31 miners fell to their death when the engine rods snapped. And another nine miners drowned when the shaft was flooded. So this is the time of the Industrial Revolution. And the miners or the engineers made advances in steam engine, and that's what allowed the mines to go deeper and deeper. So the steam engines pulled up ore, men, and drained the water from the shafts that went under water level. Mining was quite hard work. The miners would just follow a vein of tin ore chipping it away with picks and then hauling it up to be crushed. It was dark, confining, sometimes damp, often dusty, and very hot. The depths of the mine were around 1,000 to 2,000 feet. Miners worked in cramped levels. The depth of the mine and the high temperatures made working conditions in some of the deepest mines appalling. And there were no child labor laws then. So eventually globalization put the Cornish mines out of business. They weren't as profitable as mines elsewhere. However, the Cornish miners with their experience and their technology spread around the world to these other places. And uh, so there was religion for the miners. John Wesley preached to the miners in open fields and barns. And yes, this was the beginning of the Methodist church. Wheel Olds Mine is the site for Poldark's Mine. Got a nice view on the ocean. They dressed it up for filming with some wooden structures. I'm not sure if he had a, he had a steam engine, but that's what the smokestack indicates. Uh, but there was an accident. In January 1893, the miners broke through into flooded workings of the neighboring mine. As the water rushed 
into the wheel holes, the air blasted through the mine, blowing out the lights and leaving the miners in darkness. Those working on the upper level survived, but 19 men and a boy lost their lives. Their bodies were never recovered. So we took a couple of trips. We went down the river from Truro to St. Ma's, which is on the south shore. And it's a quaint little town, and I'll show you a couple of pictures. Um, where we landed, there were lots of people hanging around drinking tea or coffee. Then we set out for the North Shore and we stopped in this pub and it looked so authentic we decided to leave the picture in here. <clears throat> the rugged North Shore looks something like this where the sea has carved out little beaches but for the most part the rocky shore resist the water. So you can see a mine just about halfway up and we'll take a walk up to that mine. So that's our host walking in front of us. Um, the heather was quite beautiful. Now, can you imagine Poldark riding along the shore on his horse? So these are the filming locations for Poldark. You can see they're all over the place. Poldark's house was here on Bodmin Moor, and the mine is way down here on the tip. That's not a good, that's a really good walk unless, yeah. And uh, Charleston down here is where the big sailing boats were. And it's also the stand-in for the capital, Truro. So where is the big mansion with Warligan? Well, it's three counties away, not a short horse ride. So that's the magic of having a camera. So yes, there's some other things filmed there. This is Doc Martin's place. This is uh, this is where he hangs out. Um, I never knew Doc Martin was listed as a comedy, but that's what it said when I looked it up. Some have said that he is autistic. Um, so I read they actually hire barn somewhere in Port Isaac and they film the in inside shots there. In the show it's called Port Van, but it's not Port Van, it's really Port Isaac. Another curious thing is, I don't know if you've read any of the novels by Rosamund Pilcher, but the Germans have taken her novels and made them into a long-running TV series. Her novels are about relationships. There 
are also some English versions of her movies on the Hallmark Channel, but I don't know if they show Cornwall. And this is the only other series that I know. Um, this is Sanditon, Sanditon from Jane Austen's un unfinished novel. So that's all, folks. That's the end. All right. You're awesome. I wish it was longer. Very good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, very good. I would good. like to see lots more. Yeah, there, 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 there actually was lots more. Oh. I, I just think thought I couldn't get it in. Oh, you did a beautiful job. And really. Great pictures. Yeah, you did a wonderful job, Art. Thank you so much, Art. Thank the you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, and you did, yeah, the photography was fantastic. Mm hmm. And you know, I like the way you cut in all the uh, videos. Oh, good yeah. Research. Mm -hmm. I think we need to schedule a trip there for our, our whole area. Yeah, That's so um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the the friendship force in Somerset has gone out of business. Their, their problem was they couldn't get enough hosts. There, there were a couple of hosts that were willing to keep going, but they had to really pull host houses out, and they just couldn't accommodate that many people. They're, they were also, like us, getting older. Art, when did you take this trip? Uh, this was a little over three years ago. Mm -hmm. And what time of year was it? Had to have been the summer. I think, Julia, did, do you think it was like September? Yeah. Yes. Interesting, Art. We were on a trip to Morocco uh, several years ago with the Oklahoma Friendship Force, and we met your host on that trip uh -huh. and they invited us to come up to Somerset. There was a, there was a uh, friendship force gathering in Somerset the following year and they invited us to come up and be there for that. But uh, yeah, we knew those the your hosts there in Morocco. <laughs> they were wonderful people and they had a gorgeous house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty interesting because they still travel. Um, they do what what is called host cities. And I know when when I was in Germany, I met someone else who had stayed with them, and they had also visit visited Germany at, with those people. So there are a lot of connections. Uh, and and our hosts are still going there. They're not keeping friendship force up, but they're doing the host cities and swapping with people. They've slowed down because of the COVID situation. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was well done. Oh, thank you, Art. Are they the ones in the manor house, Art? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that would be a lovely place to stay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah it the was. only trouble was the village was so small. We would do a long day. We'd leave like at nine in the morning and come back at seven o'clock. And once we came home, there was nowhere to go. You know, we walked up and down the lane, which took all of five minutes. <laughs> and then, you know, you there did? was nothing else. <laughs> You did mention they had one pub. What more do you need? <laughs> we really enjoyed Wells, and we went to Devon one time, and there's a really neat architectural outdoor museum in Devon, 
and um, it, it shows you how the old plumbing in London, the lead plumbing was built, and it was just fascinating. Mm -hmm. Devon is much prettier. It is Cornwall. beautiful. Cornwall's very bleak, bleak yeah. and yeah. harsh. Yeah, Devon's really pretty. And that uh, Devon cream, you, you can't beat Devon cream. Cream seeds. <laughs> yeah. Cream and scones, oh boy. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been to that area, but it sure is pretty. It is nice. beautiful, yeah. Well, you did a great job, Art. Uh, mm -hmm. I, we applaud you. Yeah. yeah. You did. And, oh, and the, only thing, the only thing I did was I helped Art do the share he did everything else he did all that presentation himself so yeah. good job Art. Yeah. good job Art. thank when you, you, when, you too. Oh, when is your day. next one so, <laughs> i could have made it longer i i, I wish you had i, I did too. Was, wish it been longer what, what else do we have to do right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it, was, it was very nice so interesting, <laughs> Art. so interesting Felix and I have been to Bath, and we went to Stonehenge, and then we took the the train down to Southampton to get on a cruise ship. So it's nice to see oh. this lovely memories, lovely place. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have them too because we were in Bath, mm -hmm. and we had lunch in the uh, restaurant there in Bath, and it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so old, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was good. It's really a pretty town. Mm -hmm. How was the food, Art? How was the food? The food was excellent. It's a, a huge restaurant. Oh, we were fed very well. Meat and potatoes or what? <laughs> <laughs> Different things. Different. But the people that we stayed with in Cornwall, I met them 40 years ago and they lived in Richardson and I kept oh, in touch. Wow. I visit them when I go back home. And I was going to visit them one time, and I said, I want to come and see you for the weekend. And they said, you can come, but we're in Dubai. So I went to visit them in Dubai instead. Oh. Well, folks, by the end of this, we ended up with 30 people, which is actually more than we usually have at the library.